Greetings, Berkshire County. Thank you for joining us on the iBerkshire's Roundtable. Today we're going to hit a few topics, I hope. Sometimes we run on a little bit. Sometimes I run on a little bit. Uh, but the first one is actually uh, quite serious. It's, it's a topic that's coming up a lot in the, in the county, mm -hmm. and that a, a police, a permanent police presence in schools, whether you call it a school security resource guard. officer, oh, security resource officer. officer. It's a resource officer. officer. And I figured since you're the closest one to high school, uh, I yeah, barely remember, yeah, Lord knows. Uh, and you went to Mount Grail. Mm -hmm. First of all, did you feel safe? When you went to school every day, when you got off the bus, did you even think about safety? Um, and did you have a, 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 a cop in school mm -hmm. when you went there? So uh, I can't attest to now. I've been out of high school for six years. I graduated in 2014. But I can say that uh, during my whole six years in Mount Greylock, I mean, because it does have the middle school as well, I never felt unsafe or that I needed a police officer present in the school. I, I don't know if the teachers were just reliable enough to handle yeah. situations where yeah. if something were to burst out, they could take care of it, or if maybe just we didn't have that kind of energy between the students and so for my personal experience uh, attending Mount Greylock, I felt that it wasn't necessary to have a, a sorry, what are we calling it, a school, resource officer. School resource officer is what they're called, yeah. Yeah, I never, even even years ago, I was I was telling you how, you know, violence in school meant a fist fight, mm -hmm. which also were pretty rare. And, and on, I think the one occasion where we heard there was kind of a knife, kind of a knife involved, it made the news forever. Mm -hmm. And this was in your typical Boston suburb um, and I know this it originally came up in Pittsfield? Pittsfield City Council, yeah. Okay. Well, it came up because there was uh, questions about why there was not a school resource officer at Reed because that officer had resigned to go someplace else. Several other officers had resigned to move on to different departments. And so they were using a fill-in and the question came up, well, why do we have an officer there? Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's sort of been standard over the years to have, I mean, we, I know that we have them in North Adams. Um, I'm not sure if they're full time in there. I mean, I, I've been out of high school myself for a long time, but there are a number of communities that use school resource officers either full time within the school or part time where, you know, they sort of check in. And um, the, the idea is that they're mentors to students. They're there as sort of a, you know, a, a elemental safety, not, not necessarily to keep the kids in line, but to um, provide a relationship with police officers mm -hmm. and authority figures. Right, which, and, I mean, you know. from some uh, people from uh, have talked about this with us before, it seems that it's not really an issue to have the officers in uh, in the hallways with the students and that the students almost in, welcome and embrace these officers and are befriending them. And like you said, building relationships within the community between the youth and our officers. But. As we know in the news, there have been a number of incidents, not in Massachusetts, not in the Berkshires. Mm -hmm. Not far away. I'm and not, not, it always not works. super right. far away where where officers have been seen more as... Um, authority figures. Very authoritarian where they have arrested kids mm -hmm. or, or there have been issues, as particularly with, with students of color. And it, which, raised, which raised questions that people were at the city council meeting and said, you know, why officers, if we're going to spend the money, why not have um, social services? Why not more of that? So it's going to come back around again. It's been referred to a subcommittee. So there's going to be a discussion about the whys and the wherefores, and we'll follow up on that. And maybe we'll uh, maybe have the superintendent come on, uh, the police chief, to talk to us a little bit about, yeah. you know, what's going on. Once, once we see if anything actually is going on. Mm -hmm. So I think... And, you know, lastly, I hate to, to drag this on, but it, it, it just occurred to me, is this going to be, if you put a full-time officer at a school, is this part of the school budget? Is it part of the mm -hmm. police budget? Is it part of the, because we all know that budgets, it's a nasty fight well, every year for the school always, budget. You know, it, it, it all comes out of the same pot. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> speaking of pot, uh, Panhandlers have been an issue. <laughs> Seem to be a bigger issue. Yeah. Uh, uh, mostly in Pittsfield. Most recently, it's, it's yeah. been brought to the attention of uh, people living in Pittsfield, actually, I think, have brought this up on yeah. Facebook, uh, that panhandling has become an issue at Berkshire Crossings, people have seen yeah. people asking for money, uh, as well as, I think you said, Allendale. Right, right in the Coatesville intersection, okay. there have been 
people who have been standing there with signs saying, you know, uh, trapped, uh, no money, no food, you know, and just standing there. I mean, they're not, they don't appear to be going next to cars or, or going up to people, but mm -hmm. it seems to be more of an issue now than it had been. And it, there was a whole conversation on Facebook about it. I don't, it hasn't really been brought up, you know, in government mm -hmm. yet, but I think the council will probably be. I think it's and a matter of... people are talking about it, then it's, yeah. it's going to come up. It's going to be... If it's the yeah. issue that's yeah. been brought up by people living here, then I'm yes. sure something yeah. is going to be said at one of these town meetings. Yeah. And that's kind of a hot topic countrywide because we see the homeless crisis in Los Angeles, which is a big national news, certainly right. San Francisco, which is a long way away. Um, but it doesn't take much in a, in a fragile economy to end up, and all of a sudden now you need... Right. additional funds to take care of people who are living on the street, which is the humane thing to do. Um, but I think it will be a bigger issue if it persists, uh, these sort of classic with the cardboard sign. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. um, and there's always speculation that they're somehow working together, <laughs> that, they're not, yeah, that they're, they're, they're not in trouble yeah, at all. They have all a beautiful house in, in Great Barrington. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but it can be a nuisance, yeah. especially on a Saturday afternoon when there are 8,000 cars at that godforsaken parking lot at Berkshire mm -hmm. Crossing, <laughs> which is difficult enough to navigate mm -hmm. without having right. to worry about hitting somebody in the right. intersection. Right. Um, do you generally give them money? I have in the past. I've yeah. given people money because they seem like they they needed it, you know, not not on a regular basis, but I don't. I personally just it, have not, just for my own personal safety reasons, yeah. Yeah. but I, I would understand how maybe you would. It went, when, last year was the first time I'd seen somebody there, mm -hmm. and I saw him there for a couple of days, yeah, and I gave person, him money. A younger person, and I gave him money, and he seemed to be very grateful yeah. for it. Um, but then I saw it's again. Like, it's a personal <laughs> choice whether to give or not. But yeah, it's also so yeah. if you want pain healing to stop, don't give them money. Yeah, and they will and they'll go elsewhere. stop. Right. That's right. If uh, if somebody runs into you and says that they somehow ran out of gas, missed the bus. They lost their cell phone, and all they need is twenty dollars. I'm just going to tell you that's most likely a scam. I wouldn't touch it. It's unfortunate that we have to think that way within yeah. this community, but too many times we've seen it happen before repeatedly. So yeah. I always say I don't have cash. All I got is a card. Yeah, usually They'll that's take that. me too. <laughs> They'll take the card. With all the, the Apple card. Pay and stuff happening yeah. now, I know. Um, size me up. I'm right. sitting there with a sign, right. and I come up. What a buck, two bucks. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you've got a nightbirchers.com shirt on, so yeah. I'd say you're I'm a boss, and it's to give you a raise. I'm clearly, <laughs> <laughs> clearly underpaid. Uh, now nah, I give to you, Jeff. Thank you very much. You thank would you. be the exception for me. Okay. Um, well, maybe I'll, if you see me at Alabama. <laughs> yeah, right, there you right. go. Uh, and I guess lastly, we have a couple minutes left. We started off talking about police and schools. Uh, dress codes. Yeah. This always comes back around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always, yeah. always, mm -hmm. always. Um, I actually, there are a lot of arguments like it's an economic thing because some kids can't afford the clothes that, that the dress code is about right. or does the school just give it to them. I've always been in favor of dress codes because personally, I don't like choosing what to wear like in the morning. Like uniforms or just well, regulations? Well, you're talking uniforms or, yeah, or some see. kind of, rate, like you need to wear a white shirt and yeah. blue pants or something, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. something like that. But some of the dress codes that are coming up are not necessarily having to do with uniforms or having to do with what, what kids should be wearing in school school. And so this has come up a couple of times in North Adams. It appears to be coming up again, and they're going to be doing um, more. They're, they're going to be developing an ad hoc committee with parents and students and staff members and people who, and school committee members who are interested to discuss about um, sort of realigning the dress code because each handbook of each school in North Adams has a slightly, has, has a very different one. Mm -hmm. And obviously the high school has more stringent and there are voices on the committee saying we should be more stringent, and there are voices saying, why are we evaluating what kids wear, and yeah. what does it have to do with how they learn? Mm -hmm. Let them be comfortable as long as, you know, these five areas are covered. Let them be comfortable. Yeah. I mean, the, the idea is like, like wearing a hoodie sweatshirt is going to somehow interfere with their ability to learn. Mm -hmm. I think it's because, I mean, just to play devil's advocate, I think yeah. when you brought up the hoodie sweatshirt, I think it is because of reasons of maybe cheating or maybe falling asleep in class. So those things. Oh, like that's never happened. Oh, well. I wish I had thought of the <laughs> I mean, any other, you know. It's yeah, true, but I'm just, just trying to think. Class, uh, when you said how, how it affects uh, how they learn, yeah. I mean. Yeah. 
Definitely. When the hoodie the, made me think right, of it. Right. So mm -hmm. there, there are. So it, it, there'll be a lot of push pull. I think is is in North Adams mm -hmm. when we see that. But I think it's like you said. It's going to it comes up all the time in schools. Yeah. Every few years it comes up because fashions change. What we accept, what we find is acceptable mm -hmm. changes, and sometimes it goes back and forth. I mean, there was some of the stuff that I wore, that my, that we wore when I was in the 70s yeah. in high school, that would be considered not, not appropriate today. But uh, you know, taste change. I it's know. true. But I mean, even you bring that up, some of those styles have continued and yeah. repeat themselves. So, like you said, you may not. It may not be appropriate today, but some of those things are coming out still so, that may right. not be appropriate. If uh, that's all the time we have for the roundtable, I wish we had mm -hmm. more. We will have podcasts soon coming up. We'll be able yeah. to lengthen this yeah, a little bit, but that news that. will be out there. Uh, but thanks for joining us for the uh, iBerkshire's TV roundtable. Mark L. Shea, mm -hmm. Tammy Daniels. Jess Noonien. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks for giving and me money. And don't forget to subscribe to iBerkshire's TV. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of content up, and we want to make sure you know when we have new things coming up. Does your business have vacancies to fill? BerkshireJobs.com is the leading choice for finding you the best and the brightest talent. A proven solution for hundreds of Berkshire businesses. Find the people you need or your money back guaranteed. BerkshireJobs.com. Greetings, Berkshire County. Thank you for joining us on iBerkshire's TV. Today is going to be a special day. Uh, one of my favorites. You hear me say that a lot because we have a lot of business partners who come join us here on the show who do great things uh, in the community, and this is certainly one of them. I'm joined today by uh, a couple members of Adams Community Bank, Charlie O'Brien, President and CEO, Maureen Barron, Senior Vice President of Lending, and this gentleman to my right is Jim Bush, a selectman uh, from the town of Adams. Jim, you guys are doing a veterans program that people might have seen somewhat in the area just over the border of New York to honor the veterans uh, who, who have passed serving our country. It's an unbelievable program, and Adams Community stepped up to help you make it a reality. Tell us a little bit how it started and, and what it's probably going to mean to everybody in town. Okay, well, I was at the Red Carpet restaurant having coffee in the morning with George had that like <laughs> I do every other week. And uh, George approached me and asked me what I thought about a program honoring our veterans that were killed in action. He, you know, like you said, they're across the border, Troy and a few other cities and towns in, in New York State had this program. I said, this sounds great. So I started talking. I know a lot of people, Legion, John. Uh, Bordeaux. John Bordeaux has books on it, and John uh, Moyer. Moyer is very interested in it. So John took, said, okay, I'll join your committee. So now we have a committee of five that we sat down, we're discussing it. And we started looking, it was coming to fruitation really quickly, <laughs> a lot quicker than we thought it was going to. It kind of had a momentum of its own, and it's going to involve these great looking banners. Yes. And if you happen to drive through Troy, keep your eye out uh, on so, a lot of the, the uh, utility poles, because you can see them in Troy. Uh, a banner with a picture, and also a rank. And it's going to be ranked, uh, date of birth, date of uh, date deceased. Yeah. Uh, it's also going to have the, the, well, the what branch of service they're in. So. And of course, well, first of all, you, George, John, everybody involved, thank you for doing this. Mm. Uh, and of course, the reality of life is things like this cost money. Now, you were prepared to do your fundraising, but yes. one day you got a phone call yes. from Adams Community Bank. Uh, and we do have the president and CEO here, Charlie O'Brien. Charlie, tell us, why did you get involved? Uh, it may seem like an easy question, but not everybody called up and offered their help. Well, we saw, uh, I'm sorry, uh, thank you for having us this morning, Absolutely. first of all. And thank you for uh, allowing us to be part of this project. And uh, it just seemed like, uh, I, I read the article in I Berkshires, and it just seemed like something that was very true to our core values and what we stand for at the bank. Um, and gosh, it, it took about two seconds uh, reading about uh, honoring fallen veterans. Uh, took two seconds to make that decision. Read the article. I called up Maureen Barron. Maureen has spearheaded uh, other projects honoring veterans. Um, uh, we do something every year. She'll go and talk about that in a minute. But uh, uh, I called Maureen and uh, I said, why don't you give Jim a call? And uh, that's the phone call you're referring to. And it was a pretty easy decision for us. Uh, it seems like every time I look up, Adams Community Bank is sponsoring one thing or another. And again, the community can't thank you enough. This is what makes us run out here in the Berkshires. Um, 
This is Banners for Fallen Heroes, and you're going to see it. This will be a thing when you're driving through the downtown Adams Corridor. Yes. Uh, this is not something that's going to happen a year from now or, or two years from now. It's going to be up by Memorial Day. May 16th is our target date. Installation. Yeah. And there's going to be celebration. A, a little celebration. It's going to be about a week before the Memorial Day parade. Correct. So this is Banners for Fallen Heroes. Another thing that Adams Community Bank is going to be involved in, and you specifically, Maureen, is Reads Across America. Yes. Um, I know, I think... Is this done in North Adams yes. right now? Well, tell us all about it, if you would, please. So, um, I think three years ago, a committee formed um, to do North Adams, Clarksburg, and Reedsboro. Uh, I'm sorry, Stamford. And they've been very successful in their fundraising, which the bank also supported. And for the past two Decembers, um, Adams Community Bank has had a number. Uh, the first year, I think it was eight or ten of us, and then this year it was nine of us go in December to lay wreaths on the graves of fallen heroes um, in North Adams. Um, other groups do the other cemeteries, but we've been involved in North Adams. Our staff steps up every time if it's for veterans or or for children, school children, we have staff that will step up and volunteer their Saturdays to do this. And this isn't only, well, uh, well, uh, while the Banners for Fallen Heroes is our veterans killed in action, these are all veterans. They've lived a full life, they've been buried with full honors, and you honor them every year. Absolutely. By placing wreaths on the grave around the holidays. Mm -hmm. And it's another thing that just makes Berkshire County, uh, Berkshire County. Um, and before we get to, there are a couple other things I want to talk to about Community Bank, but before we, we're going to do this at the end, and you'll see it up on, uh, up on your screen if you'd like to donate to the project. Even though Adams Community Bank is doing the, the most of the heavy lifting, there will be maintenance involved. Correct. Uh, for, in perpetuity, really. So if you want to give uh, to the Banners for Fallen Heroes Fund, tell us how to do that, Jim. They can mail a check to the town of Adams in care of me. In their memo, put uh, banners for fallen heroes, yeah. whatever the amount is. Mary Beverly, our town accountant, has a separate account that's set up specifically for t maintaining our banners. And also, and the, the, the program's never going to stop. Unfortunately, there's going to be wars and people are going to be shot in wars and they're going to be honored. So this is going to be an ongoing thing. This is going to be a rolling program. Yes. Just because you don't get in maybe or you're, you're, you're not ready or prepared to get in for the initial May 16th, you can get in touch. You can call 743-8300. You can call the town yes. hall mm -hmm. to get the paperwork started because we will, they, you will be using a picture. Uh, of the of the fallen heroes, so we do they do need permission, um, or you can also call the Council on Aging. They will have yeah, applications yes, there as well. Yes. So if you want to donate, if you want to be part of the program, I'd say the best thing to do is either call Town Hall, ask for Deb Dunlap, mm -hmm. uh, or just visit Town Hall. They're always uh, happy to see people dropping in. Yeah. Um, and as as far as you told me something a little bit off camera, Maureen and Charlie, you, you want to speak to this too? Uh, the amount of volunteer hours mm -hmm. that the employees give. You talked about giving up a Saturday to go adorn the, uh, uh, all the, uh, the, the veterans' gravestones with wreaths. Talk about your employee volunteer program. Um, it's just an amazing thing to see. It's like a little army of people. Yeah, we, uh, last year was our 150th year as a bank. Started in uh, 1869 in Adams. Um, and uh, the name Adams Community Bank, we've had that name since 2012 when we merged two banks together. And the, the name Community was very intentional because we try to give back to our communities. And as we celebrated our 150th year, uh, we had a committee together about how to do that. And one of the things, it was Maureen's idea, to actually try to uh, ramp up our volunteer hours. And Maureen uh, uh, tracked and, and led teams of people and kept a pipeline going of tracking projects that were available, and uh, she can talk about some of the highlights there. We um, knew that our employees were very involved um, in in so many different, in their churches, in school, in youth programs, in um, educational programs, so, but we never tracked what the number of hours they really truly gave. So last year for our 150th, we started tracking 45 employees, which is almost half of our employees, wow. um, volunteered to be tracked and to submit information. And 
we started March 1st, ended September 30th, and that group of 45 people logged 1,825 hours volunteering. That's basically a year's worth of, of labor. Yeah, just absolutely. volunteering. It's it's. Uh, I hear a lot of people say, "Geez, I want to volunteer. I don't know where to get started. It's hard to find the right thing." But I, I find that if you give most people the avenue, yes, they'll step up and do it. So that's what we did, and it's not just in the nor northern Berkshire County. Correct. We're throughout the county. We have branches throughout the county, and uh, we have people in in southern Berkshire County, down in the Lee Lennox area, volunteering heavily. So it is really a, a countywide project, and it's just great at giving back to the community, and what a great way to celebrate our 150th year, which was the best year we've ever had. Uh, the community is supporting us by growing each year. Uh, we're growing at an amazing pace. We appreciate that level of support from customers. We have a great reputation out there, and we give back to our communities through efforts like this and the charitable giving that we're doing. So I just want to reiterate, Adams Community Bank did start in Adams. They are a bank, but the middle word is community. And I think you guys have shown your commitment to that in this program. And a lot, I can mention, I was at a couple of events with you. Um, and I, I want other, other people to, fall, to, to follow suit. Everybody should be doing this mm -hmm. if they have the means and methods. I cannot thank you guys enough for joining us. Today's program that we were, we're talking about, Banners for Fallen Heroes. For more information, you can call or visit Adams Town Hall, 413-743-8300. You can donate. You can sign up if a loved one has been killed in action. Jim, Selectman from Adams, thank you so much. Maureen Barron, Charlie O'Brien from Adams Community Bank, a super thank you to you guys. Thank you for joining us and coming out here this morning. And I'm, I'll be seeing you all soon, I'm sure. Thank, thank you. you for joining us on iBerkshire's TV. Support the Banners for Fallen Heroes, and we'll see you soon. Does your business have vacancies to fill? BerkshireJobs.com is the leading choice for finding you the best and the brightest talent. A proven solution for hundreds of Berkshire businesses. Find the people you need or your money back guaranteed. BerkshireJobs.com. Hello, I'm joined today by Cindy Lamour from Delago Jewelry in North Adams. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Marco. Yes, of course. And she is going to tell us a little bit about how to pick out some jewelry for your loved ones at Valentine's Day. Well, especially if you're looking for diamond pieces. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. I think that's one of the main um, pieces for, for Valentine's Day is mm -hmm. if it's not heart-shaped, it's something in the mm -hmm. diamond. Now, before we get into this, because this is also beautiful and it's calling my name, <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Delego Jewelry for people who don't really know about your business. You guys have been along for a long time, haven't you? Well, we have. Um, I I'm third generation at the jewelry store. It was started by my great uncle back in the 30s. Um, my aunts took it over for quite some time, and that's when I came into working there. And it was kind of like my part-time after-school job, mm -hmm. um, but I really took a liking to it. Yeah. Maybe I mean, who time. wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you, you, you gradually learn the different phases of the business, and we took workshops and did different um, things like that to get the, the knowledge and the know-how, and um, here we are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know that Delego Jewelry, you guys have been around for a while. Uh, you're the last jeweler in North Adams, is that correct? In North Adams right now, yeah. yes. Yes, mm -hmm. we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so let's get right into it then. Uh, so first that we uh, talked about a little bit when we were talking a little bit uh, off air is the four C's that most people come to know when picking out jewelry. Correct. So uh, they're the basic, your, your clarity, your color, and your carrot. So mm -hmm. what we're looking for in your cut would be not just your shape, but also the difference in the way the, the, the hot gives you the different way that the light will reflect and refract. Okay. Now this is, the, the earrings here represent mm -hmm. your basic um, round, brilliant cut, as well as this solitaire in the back, your classic four-pronged solitaire. And this piece here is the more modern, uh, it's an oval cut with the halo mm -hmm. rim of diamonds around it, which is I a very popular like look that. right mm -hmm. now. And then you have your pear shape, your princess cuts, which are more square, okay. um, very pretty, very sparkly. This is an emerald cut here off to the, um, the end there, and that also is set with baguette diamonds to the side, which are the long tapered baguettes. Mm -hmm. gives, it a, gives it a very subtle sparkle of light to the side of the stones. 
What would you say uh, most people are gravitated to? Well, the round brilliant. Cut? Yeah, the round brilliant is beyond <clears throat> the most popular cut, mm -hmm. and of course, it, it's. I think what everyone thinks of first when you say diamond is that classic, that classic mm -hmm. look. Um, mm -hmm. Which is why I was even sitting in the setting exactly mm -hmm. like right. this, this was even referred to as the Tiffany, so that it's it brings the stone up, it shows the stone mm -hmm. off not only at the top but also on the bottom uh, into All the around. into the point into the culet, mm -hmm. and it and it gives you uh, great lighting to come up and refract and reflect throughout the stone, which enhances your color and brings that uh, sparkle mm -hmm. to your eye. Now you talked about what the stone was actually sitting in, talking about <clears throat> settings even. Well, could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So the settings are very diverse. You can go from something very, very simplistic to something with, with multiple stones. You can have more than one center stone as well. You can add color to them. Um, you're, these are mostly all set in the 14 karat white gold. Mm -hmm. Platinum's available. Yellow gold's available. Um, and there's even styles that will just give you some uh, decoration or scrolling on the sides. There's looks that... Are, that they're bringing back the antique look, something that's mm -hmm. more open and um, like kind of like your grandma had. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so continuing with the four C's, uh, the next that we want to talk about is color, is the one that we always forget about. Color, which is right. something that people don't really consider when picking out diamonds. Right, so you're, you're, when, you, when you hear the term, you're looking for color, but in, in the diamonds, we're actually looking for the absence of color when we're talking about a white stone anyway. Okay. We're, we're looking for kind of a little bit prismatic and a sparkle that, that will radiate from the stone. Um, and, it, and of course, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for it bouncing into your eye and giving mm -hmm. you that, um, that sparkle that we've all come to know. So we're not actually looking for color like the Hope Diamond being blue, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> although there, there are divisions of color. We're actually looking for the best sparkle and scintillation that's possible to come from the stone, which mm. is Something why it has really to be cut about. so yeah. well right. in order for that refraction kind of and reflection together. of light to come up through and, and dazzle you and, and mm -hmm. give, you that, give you the full beauty of the stone. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, one more thing that I wanted to cover was uh, carrot when choosing something like this, which is something that people know the term, but they don't, sometimes people don't really know sure. what those numbers mean or. Sure. Well, so way back in, you know, the beginning mm -hmm. in India, they would measure a diamond by the number of carrots, carob seeds. So that's how they, they de determined its weight. Okay. Um, of course, now we can't walk around with pockets of carob mm -hmm. seeds. So it became, in the 17th century, it was kind of reformed. And through the metric system and all, we've gotten to our, our various ways of uh, measuring the stone for its depth and its, its diameter. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. also, we have refined it a little bit more so that it's based on a system of 100. This stone here, would represent the 100. This is what a one carat diamond would would typically look like. Okay. So that Beautiful. would be what we would call the 100. Now the pear shape here, mm -hmm. even though it's a different shape, this is about a third of a carat. So what we're, what we're doing is we're measuring and we're using a mathematical formulation to mm -hmm. find out what the carat weight is. You can also still weigh them on scales when they're loose but that's how you'll determine the different, the, the carat. And the carat, also, carat weight also leads to what a lot of people refer to as the fifth C, which is the cost. Mm -hmm. So that will, that will come into, into play eventually when which you're looking at a we stone. We all know that if you love them enough, there really is no fifth C. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it, you, it, we, we do know that everyone has, um, has a budget in mind, mm -hmm. and we do try to work with you along those lines because there, there are many different styles to choose from and different yeah. sizes and offerings that we can do. Which I'm actually kind of happy that you brought that up because we had talked about this before where a lot of people do their research online and look at different places online. Pinterest, I know, is one that I use a lot. Sure. But it's very different to be in person in front of them and hold them in your hand and feel them and you know really get to analyze it for yourself. Absolutely, you, you're 100% assured of, of what you're getting when you're able to 
take the stone and put it on and get the feel for it and oh please do <laughs> I know it's calling um, my name it's beautiful it, um, here let's it, look it at it in makes, the camera real quick it makes the producer whole, Ryan yeah it just makes such a difference to be able to see it and 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 put it on your hand to this get the size. absolutely I'm sure which it finger um, left, left hand for sure <laughs> third finger left hand that's the one that the Egyptians believed was closest to your heart. Mm -hmm. I have read that okay, online too. All right. <gasps> oh my yep. goodness. Oh, so a lot one. of scintillation, a lot of sparkle, especially with that with the halo, with the with the surround of of stones uh, around I know, the, the I love oval that. center. Look at that shine. Yeah. The lights. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. They are pretty. Slowly take it off my finger. Uh, so maybe somebody who doesn't know their ring size, because for a long time I really didn't know my ring size either. Uh, what are some maybe quick tips that you could do around the house maybe to figure it out? I know that we were talking about some little household items well, that we could use. It's true. We, um, some people have used dental floss. Well, sometimes when you're using a string or a yarn, those tend to stretch a little bit. So mm -hmm. we, we, those aren't really very accurate. Mm -hmm. A bread wrap or twist tie, those are, okay. those tend to be the like best. Like you get the produce can, too. Uh, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. You can, you can get a real, a, a nice feel and have mm -hmm. a, uh, a good fit and it'll measure right on mm -hmm. our on our, um, Which mandrel. is helpful if you didn't know your own ring size or maybe for somebody else. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But of course, we always encourage you to stop in at any time. There's mm -hmm. never a charge or anything. For right, of course. Checking Just to get out. sized. Exactly. Of course. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and and another thing to do too is maintenance on your stones and mm -hmm. stop in to uh, make sure the prongs are tight. Mm -hmm. We'll give it a nice cleaning and a little, little spa treatment so that they'll awesome. sparkle beautifully again for mm -hmm. you. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us and bringing all of this with you. I mean, this is amazing. And hopefully some of you out there got a little bit of uh, tips and tricks for maybe picking out something for a significant other or even maybe for yourself. Absolutely. Uh, if there's ever any other questions, please drop into the store. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. give us a shout Delago out. Jewelry located in North Adams. Thank you again, Cindy, for joining us. Thanks. From all of us here at iBerkshire's, we'd like to thank our two sponsors of this week's episode, Delago Jewelry and Adams Community Bank. Thank you to our special guests for joining us, as well as to you, our viewers. Be sure to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube, and we'll be sure to see you on the next one.